It seems like it's been 40 weeks since you got 40 winks. Your back pain, unbearable. Tossing, turning, trying to find that pain-free position. And that's the moment you realize you can't spend another waking moment putting off treatment. The Joint and Spine Center is Cincinnati's leading destination for spine care with a ton of surgical and non-surgical treatments for back pain. So when a moment has the power to change the rest of your life, go to the one place with the power to change it for the better, the Christ Hospital Health Network. This changes everything. The Pound This Podcast is brought to you by the Christ Hospital Health Network. This is the Pound This Podcast, episode 694, all about macros with health coach Sarah. I want to lose weight, but I don't know how to get started. What should I meal prep every week? How do I get those sweet booty gains? Inspiration for your healthy lifestyle. The Pound This Podcast with Amanda Valentine. Hey friends, welcome to the Pound This Podcast. I am your host, Amanda Valentine, and I have been obese for most of my life. I'm going to say about six years old or so, spent well over a decade yo-yo dieting. And then about 10 years ago, I made a New Year's resolution to stop dieting and start making the best decision possible in every moment. And from then, my entire life has changed. I've lost over 100 pounds. I started this podcast at the beginning of 2018 to help other people on their weight loss journeys or their journeys to become healthier people. And I have quit my full-time nine-to-five job, become a certified personal trainer, a certified nutrition coach, and I want to do everything in my power with my own personal journey to help you on yours. So if you're listening to this podcast and you find any value in any episode you listen to, please, please, please share the love, share with family, friends, anyone you think that could find some benefit from this podcast. And you can always reach out to me with any questions or comments. You can email me at amanda at amandavalentinebites.com. It's my goal to give you the best information possible for your journey and let you know that you're not alone. I appreciate you listening so much, and I would really appreciate you also sharing the love with this small business entrepreneur (laughs) as I try to make my life's mission helping other people live their best lives. So here we go. Thank you so much for listening to the Pound This Podcast. I am Amanda Valentine, returning guest and my health coach, formerly Sarah D. Sarah F., how are you doing? I'm good, girl. How are you? I am good. I wanted to talk everything macros today because I know specifically on my Instagram, I get asked a million questions about macros and I'm like, you know who really, really loves macros? Sarah. (laughs) Yeah. You know what? I I live it. I breathe it. I literally eat it. (laughs) it. So uh, if there's anything I want to talk about, it's nutrition and specifically macros. So you've been on the podcast several times before, but if if somebody hasn't caught you before, let's, let's catch up and and do a backstory about you and and your weight loss journey and how you got to where you are now. Sure. Elevator speech version. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Um, First of all, thank you for having me back. Um, Yeah, of course. Chatting with you. Um, And for the record, Amanda and I chatted for what an hour before we. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, So me in a nutshell. So I grew up always struggling with my, my weight, specifically struggling with binge eating. That was the, the crux of it for me, lots of secrecy, um, night eating, all of those kinds of things. Um, I had gotten to the point that I was just completely hopeless and had given up. And at that point I had ballooned up to, um, about 210 pounds, which I'm not a large person. So that was quite large for me. Um, and then I remember going to the doctor's office with my mom and getting on the dreaded scale And when I saw that number, I said to my mom, am I allowed to curse on your podcast? Yeah, go for it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I said, I wish I could just get, I wish I could just get a fucking laugh band. And so I started looking into weight loss surgery and I ultimately had the vertical sleeve gastrectomy in August of 2016. Um, It was sold to me as this was going to be the cure. Um, This was the answer to all of my prayers. I was going to fix it. Literally, they said it would reset my metabolism, um, which is the opposite of what it does. Um, So the first year I had great success. I was dropping weight like crazy through the forced starvation that weight loss surgery gives you. Um, And then I had reached a point where I was eating um, 800 calories. I was working out for two hours a day, six days a week, an hour of strength, an hour of cardio, and I was looking worse. Um, then that is when I found you. (laughs) Um, I knew that I, I knew that I needed help. Um, as you know, the, the 
Instagram interwebs are just saturated with health coaches all saying that they could fix you. Um, but I knew that in my case that it was, I just knew I needed somebody special. And I found your podcast through Jill Christine Fit, who I followed and envied her body at the time. Um, and you had um, my coach on, Jason Theobald, who's been my coach for now four, four or five years. And he, I loved his approach. I loved that he was into functional health, healing from the inside out. I learned through getting extensive lab work for the first time in my life when I had always been told my labs were fine. And now finding out that I, they weren't fine, number one. And the number two, they weren't running the correct labs to really see what was going on with me. Um, I learned that my hormones were crashed, that my metabolism was completely downregulated. I learned that it wasn't my fault that I had struggled, not just in that moment, but in my whole life. Um, and through that experience with him of getting my, not just looking the way that I want to look, um, which is great and all, but really becoming the person that I wanted to be inside and out. And that was really empowering for me. And I wanted to run and tell everybody about it and share all of the knowledge that I had. And I became obsessed with all of it. <laughs> and so through that, I, it turned into a career for me. And so I was hustling this along with a um, pharmaceutical uh, sales job for a while. And I went full-time coaching about a year ago. Um, In COVID? Just, it, and I, and co yeah, so actually co with COVID and I stopped traveling for my corporate job, um, I was able to really devote a lot of time to, to the coaching piece. And it's turned into, uh, I mean, just the most wonderful and rewarding career that I could ever imagine. That's something I'm truly passionate about, as I know that you can relate as well. Mm -hmm. And it's just, there's nothing better than teaching women specifically, although I do have some men on the team, that they don't have to be miserable, that it doesn't have to be so hard, that you can have the things that you want. And that's really what I believe is that, you know, being empowered through keeping promises to yourself and learning about your body and all those things. Like that's what this is. That's what the whole health picture is about. And that's what I really um, teach and preach. Yeah. And I just think, I mean, I just love the, the story of like our relationship of like, you know, you finding my podcast, finding Jason and then making this career change, which is absolutely amazing. And then last year in 2020, I was struggling so hard of, um, you know, I was in pain. I wasn't able to exercise for most of 2020. So that hit me in a certain way, making a huge career shift. And then here comes a global pandemic and dealing with depression from all of that, where I was just kind of like, oh my God, like I need help. Like, and I think that's important for me to note of like, you know, a, a weight loss journey or a health journey is absolutely not linear. And even though I had been able to f figure it out and, and do things on my own for, you know, almost a decade, it's like there's certain circumstances that come and just knock your ass down. And you have to realize of like, you know, I, I need to, I need to ask for help. And I need, like you said, like find that, that special somebody. And I, I was just like, I mean, man, Sarah would be really great. And I had you on the podcast, um, I guess late summer, early fall of last year. And then that's where I asked you before recording, I'm like, Hey, I would just, I would like to like hire you as my coach because I'm just in a place right now, mentally and physically with where, or I was having that like sciatic pain where I'm like, I, I, I can't, I can't lift this on my own right now. This I'm, I'm struggle busting so hard. And from us working together, you as my coach from beginning of November to now has just been so awesome of, you know, of uh, the accountability is, is, is amazing for me of doing check-ins every Friday we do every morning and I'm so bad personally. And I always have been of taking progress photos. So I'm so, so thankful that I'm doing those because, you know, as we do check-ins every Friday and you're going over my photos and my, my measurements and everything else going on and where I'm at of seeing those, those pictures where it's like, okay, I know I'm down a certain amount of weight or inches, but to see in the photos is like kind of crazy seeing those pictures, which I have up on my Instagram, but you can pound this of like November 1st to now here in July of like, holy crap, like it doesn't even seem like my, my body was at that place. And I want to be mad at myself of like, oh my God, how did I let myself go to, uh, you know, not that it was horrible. I went back to my beginning weight or anything like that, but just to be like, you know, you think you have such a good handle on things and, you know, life and or health and fitness and all that stuff is so much my lifestyle and I'm so passionate about it, but it's just like, you can't, 
thing, you know, that's where it's like, you know, life gets in the way sometimes why it's so important. I feel like to have somebody on your side, have a coach to go help you go through those things. And you've just been so amazing. And especially like, it's like, okay, I was going through that, whatever you start working with me. And then I have like a concussion and going through this like career change and like this no. insane amounts of stress where I'm like, Oh man, I'm just, I'm throwing it all at you. <laughs> You're so right. We've had quite the journey over the past, what, what six, six or seven months here. Yeah. Um, but you've been kicking ass. I mean, I'm so, so proud of you. I mean, I'm, I'm here to give you the tools and the accountability, but you're the one doing the work, which is, you know, that's the only way that a coaching relationship really works. And I think that as far as that feeling of like, well, how did I let myself get there or that, you know, I think that we all have like seasons and these chapters in our life where we can really like focus on this. And sometimes we are going to take a couple steps back, but use it as a learning experience because it's not, we're going to have stressful times in our life again and times where our health and fitness can't be number one again. Mm -hmm. um, and that's okay. We learn from the last time to be improved, to improve upon in the next time. And then when we do have a season where we can really hone in and focus on ourselves and then we do that. And that's just, that's part of, you know, I, you know, it's always so lame. I feel like it's so cliche to use the word journey, but it is like, it's part of the journey yeah. because it's your lifestyle. Um, and that, and that comes with ebbs and flows and, you know, just knowing that you are capable of always reeling it in. And we all go through that, but that's, you know, I think that that's really badass as well. Yeah. And, and so with, with the work that, you know, we do together that, you know, it's so much of it is, is macro focused in that, again, that's where I get so many questions and I know that you have a free guide on, um, your website for macros and, uh, the questions I get all the time are, you know, how do I know where to start and what, how do I figure out my macros? And I don't, and it's just like, you think of like, you hear of like, you know, your macros and it seems like such a confusing subject for so many people. Mm -hmm. So I guess like, let's just baby step start from the beginning of what are macros, Sarah? <laughs> sure. Well, I think before we get into like the specifics of macros that we should be very clear that it is specific to every single person. And I know that like, I don't share my macros. I know you don't share your macros mm -hmm. because it's totally irrelevant to anybody. And though we will certainly in, in this, uh, in this podcast discuss general guidelines and helpful ways to set you up. Um, it is highly individual and there are many nuances. So I think that that disclaimer needs to be there yes. um, and factored in, but what are macros? So macros are made up of three things, proteins, carbs, fats. That is sim the very simplest form of breaking it down. Um, and when people ask about, do you, what do you, why don't you count calories? Well, macros are calorie counting, but in a more strategic way so that you can promote your goals. Um, so when we're talking about protein and carbs, each gram of protein or carbs has four calories and each gram of fat has nine calories. So it is still calories and it is ultimately, we are still looking at calories, but it's just about how it is broken down. And so basically when you, when somebody's like, okay, well, well, how do I start then? Where do I know where, where should I set my macros at of like, mm -hmm. let's just say I have a weight loss goal. So, but I want to count macros, not calories. Like where would you begin? So I think that the worst place to begin is with any kind of online calculator. Um, I think there are lots of factors to consider when you are setting your initial macros. And especially with a lot of the women that I work with, a lot of us have dieting histories and that will result in ha having a usually a less than not ideal, but not, not an average metabolic rate. So that's what you always want to factor in. If you go on to one of these websites and you put in your, your, your stats and they spit out macros, um, it's, it's going to be based off of somebody that has a healthy metabolism, a certain amount of muscle mass. It's going to, it's not going to be really set up that way. So what I like to do before anybody starts with me is have them track their food. Track your food. Honestly, don't, don't make any changes to your, to anything that you're doing. Um, and I say usually a minimum of three days and even better if you're patient enough to do a week would be great. Cause then you can get a weekend and the weekdays in there since a lot of us eat differently. And then I would take the average of those days and that would, uh, calorically, and that would be your, your cal, your calories that you currently eat. So from there, so we have our calories. So let's say we have we eat 2000 calories on average. So I always recommend before you start any kind of diet, whether it be a 
fat loss season or a muscle gain season that you need to learn to eat at maintenance first. And I also find that when you stay at your maintenance where you've been and eat in the proper uh, ratios of protein, carbs, and fats, that you will see really cool changes in your body, in your weight, in your results, just with that change alone. So first step is to set those calories. And this is going to be like your first week. And then you'll go from there. So for your initial setup, you'll say, let's say you have 2000 calories, then you're going to figure out your lean body mass that I don't mind using an online calculator for. You can look for ranges, you can Google it, and it'll, it'll give you a good idea. If anybody needs help, I can help them with that as well. It's uh, honestly, as a coach from looking at a lot of bodies and learning about bodies, you figure out kind of what people's lean body mass is. And so that's the part of your body that is muscle, right? And then you want to set your protein at 0.8 to one times that lean body mass. Some people will say, set your protein one pound per body, per, per, per uh, one, one gram per pound of your body weight. Well, that's like, a, that's a really good way to set you up for digestive upset, especially if you have a lot of weight to lose. So am, am I, am I going off the rails here? No, you're good. Okay. So we've got, <laughs> we've set up, you want to set your protein goal first. Um, now the caveat to that is if you are already quite fit with more muscle mass, obviously you'll be leaning more. And, and somebody like a bodybuilder, they might be eating 1.5 times their lean body mass. But I find that like 0.8 to 1, one times is perfect for that. Um, if somebody is struggling with digestion issues, um, SIBO, like there are just a couple other instances where you would want to start your protein lower because the bottom line is, is that if you are not digesting your food, you are not absorbing your nutrients. So that would be the priority in that case. Then from there, you would set your fats. Um, fats for uh, women can, should be a little bit on the higher end because we'll want that to support our hor hor hormones and our uh, brain function for everybody. Men can get away with lower fats. Um, and the, the carb fat split, um, if you want to be really targeted about it, that's, that's what the path I'm going to go down. But if you're going to just like touch on macros, you can split your carbs and your fats kind of however you want um, and, and set yourself in a calorie deficit. And that will work. It's not the way that I like to do things because I figure if you're going to put all this effort in, you might as well do it in you know the most precise way you can. Um, but to get started, that's not a bad place. Um, so you'll set your fats. I usually put people anywhere from... 40 to 70 grams of fat. That's probably a good guideline. Um, another good guideline would you say that for women that you want to be in like 30 to 35% of your total calories or towards fat. So you would take your total calories, find out what that um, percentage is, or find out how many calories that is, divide by nine, because fats are nine calories per, per gram, and that will give you your fat grams. Um, but usually that falls in that like 50 to 70 range. If you don't want to be so mathematic about it, men can eat much lower fat if for optimal results. But I think that for pr preference, um, you typically don't want to go below 50 and then from there you fill in your carbs. So you've done the math on how much protein you need and how much fat you need. You do the math on how many calories you have left over divide by four because carbs are four calories per gram. And that is your carbohydrate grams. And I know that probably just sounded like a crazy, like mathematician equation, but if anybody has questions, I'm happy to walk them through it. Well, how many women that you work with get spooked out by carbs? Because it feels like everybody that I, I, I have this conversation with where they're, they're asking these sorts of questions really just want to heavy lean on the low carb lifestyle. Absolutely. So I think that, yeah, I see that a lot too. And I also think that maybe eight out of every 10 women that start on the team that they feel like that I have just like opened up Christmas morning every morning for them when I'm like, you're going to eat potatoes and you're going to eat rice and you have some <laughs> pasta. And they're like, wait, and I'm going to lose weight. But yes, the answer is you still can. I mean, it is still about energy balance, but um, I think that the, the low carb life has just been so drilled into us because of the keto and the, the things that sell. Right. Mm -hmm. I also think that the high fat diets have been sold so successfully because carbohydrates will cause you to hold water, which, and not in a bad way, it'll make your muscles look fuller. And so because of that, when you cut carbs right away, you have that big water weight drop, which gets people all excited thinking that they're losing fat. 
So I think that that's part of a huge sell of the high fat diet. And I also think that for some people that it's simple because you don't have to think about it. I'm just not going to eat carbs. Yeah. And in the short term, sure, that might work. But in the long term, you're really sacrificed your ability to put on muscle. You're sacrificing brain function. You're sacrificing having energy to do things, um, ability to perform in the gym, ability to perform in your job. Um, have You're putting your digestion at risk. So there's, um, I think that the fear of carbohydrates, well, I know that, is just lack of education. Um, and I think that like you would agree too, because it's just, it's drilled into us as just being facts when it's nothing could be farther from the truth. Yeah, totally. It's just, and it's so crazy that you'll notice, I mean, in a couple of years, it'll be on to something else and well, we won't be mm -hmm. freaked out by carbs anymore. And you can kind of just see the like ebbs and flows in the cycles of marketing <laughs> where it goes yeah, into that of like, carbs are awesome. I Right. And I know it's not, it's not a sexy sell, but you know, I it's just, and it sounds crazy, but how about just eating a balanced diet where you get protein, carbs, fats, where you eat mostly nutrient dense whole foods and then have a, a percentage of, of fun foods to say that you can indulge in in moderation. Like why I know it doesn't sell and I know it sounds crazy, but I swear it works. Well, and that's the thing too. I think that is so helpful about counting macros is you can literally put anything into that macro equation of, you know, if like you just got to have Cheez-Its or whatever, it's like, okay, well, let's figure out what, what, you know, then you learn of like, what is this doing for you? And I think that when you understand what the food you're putting into your mouth is bringing to the table, as far as nutrients go or what it's bringing to macros, then you're just kind of like, oh, well, I, I want to make a better choice than this. You know what I mean? I think it makes you, gives you a better understanding of the food you're eating rather than just calories, because you could also just eat, fulfill your calorie requirement with bacon every day. You know what I mean? Where, but if you're eating a balance of macros, then you're going to have to you know, have some variety in there and understand food more than just, I don't know. I was, I was told 1200 calories cause that's the magic number for, you know, for women, for some reason, when it's oh. the number for toddlers and it's like, well, I can just have 1200 calories of M&Ms then. And so I think it's just, so much helpful to teach you un and understand of like, well, why would I want to choose, you know, this variety of food? And also what is a rice or a potato bringing more to the table than a cheese it, not to saying you can't have it, but to understanding how it's going, things are going to fill you up and how they, how they work into your daily life and into that equation. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess we probably could have started with like why macro macro counting is superior. And I think both of our opinions um, is because it really is nutrition education. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you choose not to count, going through the exercise um, to get to your goal will put you in a position that you can maintain your results because you've obtained that knowledge and not from eating, you know, prepackaged things or because somebody told you to eat egg whites and avocado for breakfast. It's because you understand how to build a balanced plate. And I think that that is, I mean, I can tell you I'm living proof that I will go months on end and not log my food because I've gone through that exercise and I've obtained that knowledge that now I can go months on end and I can maintain my results and even improve because I know that I've gone through the, that, you know, that exercise. Yeah. Which just brings a, across the point that we discussed before we started recording, of uh, you know, someone said to me of like, just tell me what to eat. And I was like, but does it, cause that's what she said. That's what's the only thing that's worked for me. And I'm like, has it worked? Did you gain all that weight back? And she said, yes. I'm like, it didn't work because you didn't understand what you were eating. And I think that's the important thing. And also tracking to understand, to track before you change your lifestyle to just give yourself that information. So you understand how you're eating now, what, you know, what the trends are, what you do. And then whenever you are, you know, doing macros and doing all those things, like you're learning the tools, that is the knowledge of not somebody just barking at you what to do. And then you don't know how to take that into real life or do intuitive eating or have that understanding later. So you're essentially setting yourself up that you have to be told what to do the rest of your life, or you're going to have to track the rest of your life of just, you know, that's why it's like, yeah, if people, I know so many people are like, I hate tracking. I don't want to do it. I'm like, well, you have to at least do it for a little bit to understand what we're doing. Once you understand it and know how to apply it, then yeah, like you can, you can ditch it until you change your goals and you need it again. So it's just, mm -hmm. I think that 
for some reason, I don't know, if, like I think, well, a lot of us, are, we wish we there was a magic pill and there was an easy way out. So I think there's that. And then the marketing is like, well, we have the right answer, buy our crap, and then you got it. That it's, but really the real answer is no, it's just like anything else, it's going to require a level of work of what you put into it is what you get out of it. And you're going to have to take the time to understand why you're doing this, which I mean, myself, I've been so guilty of this in the past. And, and that's where I've, I've had a weight problem of like, I wouldn't invest any time in myself or my own body or my own health. And so it was just eating 12, you know, Weight Watchers cupcakes because they were one point and not understanding it was doing for me. But I wasn't investing in how to learn how to eat for my own body or to feel the best way you can. And I think when you have that mindset towards it, it's, it's not dieting anymore. It's, it's just living. <laughs> well, absolutely. Well, and I think that, you know, anytime that anybody comes to me to, to work together, they always come to me because they want to look better. I get it. That's mm -hmm. surface what, what we want. But if you instead approach the coaching experience with, I want to actualize my best self. And that means creating habits. That means creating a vision of future you and doing the things that quote unquote, she does. Um, and then before it, you, you become her. But I find that when people are so focused on the result, instead of being focused on the habits, on the daily things that you have to do, um, and also embracing some discomfort, because if you want to learn how to do anything, not just in this field, anything, if you want to learn a new skill, if you want to improve in any way, it's going to be hard at first mm -hmm. and that's okay. And I think that that's why it's always, I mean, it's fantastic if you have the means to be able to hire somebody to help you and to educate you. Um, but, you know, as we've discussed before, you still have to meet your coach halfway. You still have to be showing up. You have to be communicating. Um, but that is definitely just, that's part of the game is that you have to expect it to be a little bit hard in the beginning. You have to expect for that just like if you were learning any other skill, um, you know, if you want to learn how to play tennis and you've never picked up a tennis racket, you're going to suck for a little while. Yeah. But if you have a good instructor, then you're going to get rolling again. And, but, and alternatively, if you, if you don't hire an instructor, you can certainly do your own research by listening to podcasts, by Googling, by doing all those things. And maybe it'll be more of the Greyhound route than the private jet, but that doesn't mean that you're not going to still arrive at your destination. Yeah. Well, and I think what's amazing too, is that there's so many things that you can do with that knowledge. Like, you know, if you say that you, you, you begin by doing weight loss, but then you're like, okay, well, I would want, I want to know how to sculpt my body. And then using those macros of like, okay, well, how do I build muscle now of like, again, of like, if I want to be able to do this thing, how can I fuel my body for the thing and having that knowledge, then you can, you can twist and move it and move, maneuver it in so many different ways, which I'm sure you can speak to because you've been through so many levels of, of your journey from going from weight loss to, you know, sculpting your own body. Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's that aspect of like, you can be really scientific about it for um, performance related goals, for aesthetic related goals, but also for health goals. I mean, you know that I am like just the queen of get all the lab work so that we can learn everything about your body. And if somebody is struggling with things like, I guess I'm going to target you out of the gate, uh, Hashimoto's yeah. um, or PCOS or dealing with um, any kind of gut health issues or um, insulin resistance, which is something that I see, gosh, more often than not in labs, um, then you can also manipulate your macros to heal your body. And so it's like, it's just, there is so much that comes from this knowledge that it's just like, I, you know, I'm like the poster child for this because there really is um, so much to it and so much value in it. But I do think that we need to talk about um, dirty macro counting versus clean and, the okay. and, and balanced meals, because I think that, um, so let's, so what dirty macro counting is. So um, if it fit, fits your macros is a, is it like a program? Is it a, um, I don't know if it's just like a website. I think it is a website, but it also kind of, I don't know, kind of turned into it's like almost its own little thing. Like it's almost little gang. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of honestly like bastardized the beauty of macro counting to me, um, because basically what it does is it says you can eat whatever you want to eat as long as it fits into your macros for the day. So if you want to incorporate 
Um, all of these foods that are not nutritious. And like Pop-Tarts. Loads and loads. Pop- Pop-Tarts <laughs> are like the infamous and if it's macro thing. Um, or if you, and then just make up for your protein with loads of protein powder. As long as by the end of the day, you have hit your macros, you are good. And that has really just taken away from the point of macros, which goes back to it being nutrition education. So yes, it's wonderful because you can incorporate treats from time to time. I have like a 90, 10 rule. So I like, uh, I like to do 90% whole foods and then 10% I have wiggle room. And like, you know how I build diets, you know, Mm -hmm. I like to have some chocolate chips in my life. I do like to have a sweet meal every day. Um, I do incorporate some supplements and protein powder, but 90% of my intake is whole foods. And on top of that, all of my meals are balanced. So I'm not going to um, have a just a carbohydrate in one meal and then, you know, load up on a bunch of fats later. And the reason being is not just um, it. Well, first of all, so that you know what your plate should look like, but also so that you are satiated. So you have maximal bioavailability of nutrients. Um, It's also important to be adding micronutrients, fruits and vegetables to your diet And so I think that this, if it fits your macros has turned into this, such a trendy thing, but it like defeats the purpose of learning how to eat well, and then also incorporating less nutritious things in moderation, which is what it means to me. And I know that you're on the same page with that as well. Definitely. I do want to go back and touch on, um, autoimmune diseases. And I know that so many women that listen to this podcast, um, you know, have PCOS or like me, I mean, I found out from the blood work that I did that you suggested that I have, uh, Hashimoto's. And those sorts of things of, you know, just, and I know that so many women struggle with thinking like, I can't lose weight because I'm dealing with these hormonal issues or I have this, you know, autoimmune disease of how can you use, or how do you use, because I know you use that for yourself and your clients of using your macros in order to um, heal that or make life a little bit easier. Absolutely. So there's like a, there's a couple things. So If we're talking autoimmune disease, we're talking, we want to be addressing inflammation in the body. So that is always a big focus. And that comes from eating whole foods, proper supplementation, obviously having nutritious uh, uh, foods in your diet. If we're talking somebody that has PCOS, um, we're looking at estrogen dominance. Um, We're looking at insulin resistance, which you can manipulate with diet. If we're talking somebody that has uh, SIBO or GERD or acid reflux, all of these things can be manipulated through your diet. Now, I will be very upfront that a lot of these things also need to have proper training. We need to pull stress off the body for a lot of these things. So if somebody comes to me, and this happened to me last week, somebody came to me, she said, I have PCOS, I've been really fighting with it. Um, I love doing CrossFit. I'm all about training for strength and power. And I said, you know, I would love to help you, but if you're gonna continue to do CrossFit, then, and not that you can never do CrossFit again, but in this season of your life, in order to heal, you need to pull stress off the body. So there's that aspect too. And you and I have worked through that as well. If you know, you can't be going like balls to the wall if you are going through this healing stage. And now you're in a place, well, let's move the concussion. Aside. <laughs> now, now you're in a place where without a concussion that you can add in hit training, that you can train to failure. And so it has to come from this multi-pronged approach of nutrition, training, cardio being programmed in, in properly for your condition. Um, and in a lot of cases, I'll be upfront that supplements really do help. Um, and you know, I, I don't, I supplements should only be given to you based off of your labs from somebody that knows what they're talking about. Don't buy something from some MLM or because somebody told you that apple cider vinegar gummies healed their gut because I promise you they didn't. Um, but you know, that supplements do have a role to play. And a lot of times people ask me, is this forever? And I feel like there's a yes and no to that for certain conditions. Yes. The supplements are going to be forever. Um, we also need to factor in that the quality of the food available to us is not what it once was with our fields and things being overly farmed. Um, but a lot of the times what you start out with is not what you end up with for kind of maintenance as well. Sorry, I just went on a a supplement tangent. No, that's, I mean, that's totally great because I mean, so many people struggle with that and then it doesn't feel like anybody's getting any answers or at least uh, Mm -hmm. in in my perspective with how often I get asked about those, those sorts of things. And there's just so many things that are healed through diet and what you're eating. And it doesn't feel like that's the message that you get when you talk to your doctor all the time. Again, not throwing every doctor under the bus because I've had some really great doctors that have given some really great advice of like, 
hey, instead of throwing pharmaceuticals at me, like, hey, let's add some turmeric into your diet. Let's, you know, let, let's add some some ginger and like let's try to get inflammation down through some like natural things. And, you know, I appreciate that rather than here's your loads of pills that you need to go pick up. Um, but it just feels like that's something it, it it almost feels like it's forever, or at least the the impression I get from so many women is like, oh, I'm just, this is just how it is forever. And this is, I just have to deal with it. I'm never going to be able to lose the weight. And the thing is there, there are things that you can do. And is it the cure? I'll know, but there's ways that you can feel certainly much better. Like I found out, you know, through Hashimoto's to cut out more gluten, which I haven't gone completely gluten free, which I probably uh-huh. should, but I've definitely back then, like I've switched to gluten-free pasta whenever I have pasta, like I'm doing it in my meals this week and making some of those changes. And I do feel a difference minus the concussion before concussion, like <laughs> less, you know, brain fog, things like that, where it's, it's amazing what food can do for your body. And then I think when you have that knowledge again, of like knowing what you're eating and the macros and what it's bringing to you, it, I mean, it's so powerful in so many ways. It totally is. And it, and I mean, gosh, it's, it's the, I mean, I know that I'm like the poster child here, but I've just like, I've seen it with myself. I've seen it and working with hundreds of people um, that it really like, it is the answer. I mean, like I have people, I, it's very rare that I have somebody that comes to me that hasn't t- tried everything. Um, I, when I ask about dieting history, it's rare that there aren't at least five things. Sometimes there's 20. Um, and then finally it's like the, you know, the, usually the first week they're like, Oh my God, Sarah, I mean, all this food, are you sure? Like, are you sure? Are you punking me? And it's like, <laughs> no, if you eat food in proper combinations, like you, that, that you do feel good. You do feel satiated. You're not feeling ravenous and running to the pantry. That is like the beauty of eating food in proper proportions and eating food that like fuels your body. Um, and like, as far as the prescription stuff, I mean, most things that are prescribed by a doctor are especially for what we're talking about right now are going to be band-aids for the problem. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know what, (laughs) Dr. Jolene Brighton, who she's a, she's a fantastic doctor who writes a lot about, um, female issues and her book beyond the pill. If anybody wants to read about like basic hormonal health, um, and birth control specifically beyond the pill is a great book. Um, she says that, you know, all of these things are like putting a bandaid on the splinter when like, you could just take a minute and remove the splinter. And I feel like that's so many of the things with like this internal health stuff that's related to nutrition, but we all want the quick fix. We all want the thing, but the quick fix is a bandaid always. And we always find ourselves 10 steps farther back than when we started. And we know that's just the case with all of this bad diet bullshit too. Yeah. Well, and, and to switch gears for a second, I want to go back to what you touched on too, of like, whenever you start working with um, somebody, you want to get them, especially if they've dieted a ton, which I feel like um, pretty much that's all of us. <laughs> I feel like we've all been yeah. on some sort of diet or another somewhere in our life. Although I can tell you that in the rare, occur- I mean, I think that maybe I've had less than five people ever that I've worked with that I've never dieted before. And man, they are so easy. It's like people that have never dieted and men are like so, so simple to figure out, but that's not the reality of the situation. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Cause you don't have any of this other crap just programmed in you where yeah, the fear of carbs or anything else or that 1200 calorie mark, wherever the hell that came from. Well, but- and the, and the physical side effects, so to speak of dieting you're every time that you diet, Um, in an irresponsible way, your hormones take a hit, your metabolism takes a hit. Every time you do it, it's having a negative effect on you if you're not doing it in a a, a properly and in a healthy way, which gosh, I mean, I know for years, I never, I didn't even know what it was. I thought, I thought that it was 1200 calories. I thought it was cardio. I mean, that's like, that's what we're told, right? Yeah, totally. So that that's where I wanted to go with talking about finding, you know, your true maintenance. And like what we had to do with, for me for four months is that reverse diet, which I absolutely could not do on my own because I'm just that mindset that is just bore into your head of like, if you eat more, you're going to gain weight. You know what I mean? And especially because Mm -hmm. whenever you feel like you're doing those things, if you're not getting those, the, that quote unquote reward of the scale going down, which so many of us are attached to the scale, which is a whole other topic, instead of just, you know, using, how do you feel (laughs) versus what Mm -hmm. is the scale telling you, letting the scale tell you how you feel of there's just, 
I mean, it's a hard process that, especially where the mental space I was in in 2020, that I definitely wouldn't have been able to go through a four month reverse on my own at all. But we did that of like getting myself to, you know, getting to a place where I was eating more and getting where my body, where my metabolism was, you know, in a level where I could be firing on all cylinders and not where I was. And I, I imagine you have to do that with a ton of women. Yes. The reverse, the reverse dieting is so hard, but, it, and it takes a long time, but there is nothing that is more worth it because it puts you in a position that you'll have a responsive body. And for most people, yourself included for like the first time in probably a long ass time. Yeah. And now you're seeing the benefits of that word. We've been in a deficit for a pretty long time. We took a quick a little recovery here, but we've been in a deficit for a long time here. We haven't had to push that hard. We haven't had to make many changes and we're consistently getting a response from your body because you did the hard shit of going yeah. through the reverse. Um, and the point of a reverse diet is not to lose weight, though um, it, it usually is a byproduct. The point of a reverse diet is to get you, put you in a position where your body is working for you so that if you choose to diet, that you'll have a responsive, healthy body and that you can diet in a healthy way. Um, I find that like almost, I mean, I would say like 99.9% .9 of people that I bring through a reverse um, look significantly better through the reverse. Um, it may not show in the scale. It always shows in the pictures, which is why pictures are my number one tracker of progress. Um, my, I was actually kind of like the exception to the rule. I did look radically better for my reverse, but I gained like 15 pounds and that fucked with me. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I reverse people a little bit different than Jason does because of the people that I work with. And because of my experience, I set it up in a little bit of a different way. He's really aggressive. Um, but also if you diet too soon before you're fully healed, you have to reverse all over again. And that is like so common that people will say to me, Sarah, I'm just like so sick of eating all this food. I just want to diet. I just want to this. And even if they're getting the results of a diet physically in their mind, they want to diet. They want to, they want to pull food away. Um, and I made that mistake in my reverse and I had to go back and I had to reverse for another six months. Oh, so you God. have to be, you have to be patient and ride it out. It's hard, but it is so worth it. And um, if somebody is like questioning right now, if they're, if they should be in a deficit or if they should be reverse dieting, um, really simple math is at the very, very minimum, if you are not eating 10 times your body weight to maintain your, um, your current weight and calories, then you need to reverse diet. So you never want to be eating below that when you start a diet, because then you're going to find yourself in a place where you're going to have other side effects that, um, that will come with obviously an irresponsible diet as we'll call it. Yeah. And it's so wild because you would think that your mental space would be, Oh God, thank God I can eat all this food. Woo! <laughs> That's what I want. Uh, yeah. Working on my body while eating more food, but you know, and it is like that for a little bit. And then for summer, it's just this mental thing. Then you get to the point where, at least for me, and I wasn't even eating, my calories weren't even that crazy when, you know, I was what, just like over 2000, 2100, something like that. Yeah. And I like, like, usually if I, I really try my very best to get every single person over 2000. And I usually, I mean, some people I get up higher than that. Some people, but it's pretty rare that I don't get somebody to 2000 before I pull them down. And you can keep pretty much every, I mean, unless we're talking like a very tiny woman, um, you can get pretty much everybody looking better as, and get them up to that caloric range with very little cardio. But it's so wild because it feels like, again, like you're like, I'm tired of eating. It gets to the point where it's like, I'm eating so much food, but at the same time, like you could go out to eat and eat 2000 calories in one sitting and then go out to eat again on the same day. Right. It's just such a weird. And again, that's like the knowledge of understanding what you're doing, where you can eat 2000 calories and it feels like, oh my God, this is a job to eat somehow, but you could go to Applebee's or something and, you know, mow down 2000 calories in one drink. You know what I mean? That's yes. like <laughs> Qual quality definitely matters. I mean, I remember when I first started my first reverse, it was like, well, when I first started with Jason in general, I was so excited to see potato. It was like, I had my air fryer and I was like the air fryer potato queen. I was so excited. And then even like a month or two in, I was starting to be like, this is so much food. And when I, I'm talking to clients about this, a, we, I always give the, the cautionary tale of me dieting too soon before my reverse was over. Um, but also it puts yourself in, like it puts you in a position 
where you have to kind of embrace the fact that there is discomfort that comes with dieting in the traditional sense, but there's also discomfort that comes with reverse dieting. And usually it's at the tail end of either of those phases. You know, when you first get started, it's not so bad, but towards the end, like, and you just, you kind of have to embrace the discomfort. And, um, and there's also tons of strategies that you can use to, to minimize discomfort on both ends of that spectrum, but that's part of it. And I think that keeping your eye on the prize and knowing that, Hey, if I get my metabolism, my hormones, my internal health working for me, then that's also going to give you so much more freedom in your life where you can, you know, incorporate a free meal from time to time that you don't have to be so, 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 so on point. Um, and like the, so it just, there's the, like the value of taking the a couple of months to reverse diet is so, so worth it. So how do people work in alcohol into um, their macros and everything like that. I, then uh, that's not a really an issue for me. I don't really drink too much, but you know, other people are like, I need to have some wine. I have to have some cocktails on the weekend. How am I counting macros around that? That's a that, m- most commonly asked question. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Um, so alcohol is, uh, I, I call it the fourth macro or like the redheaded stepchild macro because um, it doesn't fall into one of our three buckets that we count of protein, carbs, and fats, but it obviously still has calories. So um, for every gram of alcohol, there are seven calories as opposed to our protein and carbs with four and our fat with nine as a reminder. Um, so what we want to do when we're drinking is to account for those calories by kind of robbing from one of our other buckets. So protein is not the bucket that I would rob from because we want to make sure that we have enough protein for satiation to maintain our muscle mass, all of those fun things. Um, But what we can rob from are carbs and fats. So you can, if you're a MyFitnessPal user, or I've I've recently switched to the app Chronometer, um, you can search for, um, let's say, vodka as carbs, vodka as fats, et cetera. And that will log the food that will kind of like log it in a way where those alcohol calories are accounted for, um, by pulling from your carb and fat allotment. And like, I always like to think of macros in general as like, kind of like, it's like your bank account balance and you have to, you know how much you can like pull in all of those things. And that's part of it too. Well, the thing is with alcohol though, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to count for two drinks into my macros, but once I get two drinks, your girl kind of drunk and I am not making good, good decisions anymore. So then when I, have, <laughs> where do you go from there okay. where you're like, I had two white claws written down, but I had seven. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so let's, let's talk about that. So I am like the queen of like routine planning, practice, all of these things. And just like we were talking about before of, you know, you're not just going to do this and be good at it. Like any new skill, just like you're not going to, the first time that you go out and you get lit, lit with your friends, you're probably not going to hit your macros, um, even if you've planned it. But what you'll do is you'll use it as a learning lesson so you can strategize for the next time. So let's talk about some strategies that I use. So I will... I always, I highly recommend pre-logging your day until you have a very solid idea of your, what you should be eating and hitting your macros. Um, So especially when you have a change in schedule, and this is common for like, as you approach weekends, any kind of like social things. I know a lot of moms as their kids are getting out of school right now, summer schedules are different. So make sure that you have a plan in advance. And so let's say we've planned for two white claws. Um, And then you have, what, what did you say? You ended up having seven? Yeah. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to log it because you want, you're going to be honest because Mm -hmm. part of, part of learning this, this game is being honest with yourself um, and being honest with your coach. And by the way, if you have a coach that is ever going to give you any shit, any judgment, any shame for going off of your plan, um, then you need to find a new coach because what your coach's job is to do is to educate you, to help you with strategies um, and to, and to support your decisions as an adult, because by the way, I have all adults on my team and I treat them as such. And if they want to go out and they want to have 15 drinks, then that's their prerogative. And it's up to me to educate them as to what that is. Um, but they can do what they want. And I'm never like, you, you know, I'm never, I never get angry or any of those things. Um, so pre-logging your day is important. You go out and you have seven drinks. You're going to be honest about it. Then the next morning you're going to wake up and you're going to come up with a plan for the next weekend. So for me, I will have like mixed type of drinks. So I'll do, if I'm going to have like a short evening and I know I'll have like one drink, I just do vodka rocks, tons of lime. If I want to stretch that out, cause I'm going to be with people for a while, then I will add some club soda to that. I try not to start drinking until a little bit later in the evening. If I know I'm going to want to have something food wise afterwards, I plan it in in advance and it's just figuring out kind of like what makes you tick. And then 
not expecting you to be perfect the next time, but saying, okay, well, next time I go out, what can I do to improve on the previous time? Yeah. And I think it's also just the lesson to, you know, to pay attention how you feel the next day after you make some of those decisions of like, you know, I mean, aside from a hangover, <laughs> like how does your blood, you know, you just like, or your fingers feel fat and your clothes don't fit right. And you just feel kind of gross and ugh, like, just pay attention to that. Like, and then the next time be like, well, do I want to spend the whole next day or the next couple days feeling that way again to kind of, you know, inform those decisions and that stuff like that helps me. But it also, it, for some reason now, like I have just skidded off the deep end of hangovers where I don't know what happened in 2020. I mean, everything happened in 2020, but it went from <laughs> me just being have a, like a horrible hangover to I'm barfing the next day. And I'm like, oh, well, that must be something that needs to happen to me at this age is that I barf from drinking the next day. And that's why I don't really drink too much because yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to pass on that. <laughs> And you can think about the effect that it has on your body. I mean, the truth of the matter is, is that alcohol is metabolized in your liver as a women. Um, we need to be flushing out estrogen and removing those toxins and alcohol is going to keep us from doing that. Um, and also when you drink alcohol, the first thing that your body is going to metabolize is that alcohol. So anything that you eat um, will be more readily stored as fat. Um, so like having that education is good. If you, if you have thyroid issues, alcohol is really not a good, uh, not a good road for you to go down. Um, but again, like it's up to you to find what works for you, what's reasonable for you, what's sustainable for you. Um, I usually recommend trying your very best to do one to two drinks, one to two times a week, account it into your macros. Um, but I'll be honest about what I personally do. Um, I'm not a one to do two drink type of girl. If I'm drinking, I'm getting drunk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what works for, so, so I don't drink every week, but I will every like six to eight weeks, I'll go out and I will get absolutely lit with my husband. <laughs> and that's what, and, and you know what? And for me, the hangover is worth it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, that's how seldom that I do it. And that's the balance that works for me. Um, and also at this point, as far as like aesthetically, I mean, I'm in maintenance, so I can have a little bit more wiggle with those things in food as well. Um, if I was focusing on a fat loss phase, then I would probably not be doing that. It's about what's important to you at this time. And also, um, how important the time factor is to you of, you know, when I, do I want to incorporate more of these less nutritious foods, more of these drinks and, um, and, and have this go slower for me, which by the way, I never have a problem with because forward is forward. And if that is your balance that you can maintain for life, then I'm totally on board with that. But if you really want to, you know, hone in on your goals and make this the season of you, then maybe it can't be a part of your life. And that's, you know, it's, again, it's up, it's up to everybody to decide what's best for them. Yeah. Am, am I missing any questions about macros? Uh, no, the, I mean, that maybe your most common questions that you get about it, have um, we touched on all of those things? Oh my gosh. I talk, gosh, I talk macros all day long. I think we touched on like, the base, I think we touched on the basics, but I'm like, I'm always available for questions, whether it's, you know, with client or not, I mean, anybody can feel free to reach out to me. I mean, I know you have plenty of macro knowledge as well, but um, I'm always happy to chat macros. And if, and if a lot of questions come through, then I would be totally glad to come back and we can go through them as well. Awesome. So walk me through the process. I mean, I know the process, but <laughs> for everybody else, if they're like, oh my God, Sarah is speaking my language, kind of like whenever you heard Jason on the podcast and you're like, <laughs> I, 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 I need her. So what's the process of joining, you know, team fit with me of, you know, reaching out to you and then what is the onboarding process look like? And then what does it look like for you helping everybody reach their goals? Absolutely. So, um, my website is up and running. I think that's new since the last time. Yeah, maybe not. Um, teamfitwithme.com. There's all of the information that you need there. We have tons and tons of options. Um, you can also, you can fill out the contact page there. And then from, uh, from that inquiry, I will respond to you via email check your spam because sometimes it goes there. I don't know why. Um, and I will send you a link for a consult call as well. From there, we will set up our call, talk about your goals, talk about if I am the right coach for you, or if Jess or Carrie who, um, who coached beneath me are the right match for you. Um, and then I also have, and so that's for the nutrition coaching, which also includes uh, virtual training that's uploaded through an app. Um, the coaching is 100% 
soup to nuts. We teach you everything. We are available at your, I, I call myself a concierge coaching service because I think that's the best way to do it. And it's funny, I just had a business review and somebody said, I was looking for competitors and you don't have any because nobody provides the service. Um, we have a team doctor. We have a mental health professional on staff as well. So we have every kind of resource to take care of you in that uh, on that front. Um, and recently we've added on one-on-one -on -one virtual personal training with Renee, who happens to be my mother as well. And is uh, she is where I, where I learned all of my uh, perfect form from. She's truly a world-class trainer. And then Kristen as well, who has been a longtime client of mine and she's been uh, a fitness instructor for decades. Um, so, and that's set up in a way that you can have, you make appointments, you can either buy time blocks to go over questions that you have, or you can do a uh, full three times a week uh, with your trainer to make sure that you're executing everything in good form. And I brought that on because I, in the gym, I just am so disgusted with 99% of the trainers that are there <laughs> that I like, gosh, Amanda, yeah. yesterday I was at the gym and I, I honestly wanted to walk up to the trainer and be like, just teach her how to do one lat pull down correctly. Um, so just the quality, as you know, and as we're all trying to change is so poor out there. So I did add that service on to make sure that everybody could learn um, because there is nothing intuitive about strength training. It is a skill to learn. Somebody must teach you how to do it safely, effectively, all of those things. Um, we also have a meal plan service. So there's lots of add-ons here. If you do everything soup to nuts, there are package programs as well, where we will help you uh, with a meal plan approved by a registered dietitian. Everything will be uploaded into an app for you weekly with recipes. You will get a grocery list. So if there is there are options where you can break these all these up into pieces or you can uh, buy a full package. And we just released a platinum package, which actually is, when is this podcast going to go out? Uh, in, from time of recording in a couple weeks. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so before the end of the month, you think? Yes. Okay, perfect. So through the end of <laughs> July, $500 off the platinum turnkey package. Um, so that is put together where you have everything from the nutrition coaching to the meal planning to the virtual uh, personal training three times a week. There's your total turnkey starter kit um, for anybody that wants to get a jump start. And everybody that has participated in the platinum program, actually, the results have just like blown me away. Um, so that's been a new fun add on too. That's awesome. Well, did so I cover it. Did I miss anything? You, you're doing the program. Did I miss anything? Um, well, I think that's just probably what the question that that I get a lot. And I think that you probably do too, of just, yeah, the, the meal planning or, you know, of just the, cause again, the, the like, tell me what to do sort of thing. So maybe like for the first month or so, but you're helping people build out those menus and stuff. Right. Yeah. So, you know what, it's so funny that you say that because I was so hesitant to add on the meal plan service because I am all about learning, teaching people how to do it themselves. And there's nothing that I like better than teaching people how to macro count. But when you are first starting out, it is overwhelming. It's a lot. And so it's been really a great add-on for that, for new people starting out. And then also I've had situations where people um, are perfectly capable of macro counting and planning their own meals, but they have a lot going on and it's hard, you know, to set aside the time. I have a woman who has five children and works a full-time job and adding the service on for her was like, just increased her adherence exponentially. Um, but for the newbies starting out, it also gives you a history of meals that you know all work for you. So I've set it up in like, I'm, I recommend if you want to, to do it. And by the way, you don't have to do it. I've, I've very successfully taught people the macro count for years before adding the service on. Um, I would say plan to do it for about three months so that you have it. You get your groove going for the first like month, month and a half. Now you have uh, six weeks of menus. So let's say you eat five meals a day times three, 15 meals um, a week times six weeks so that you have all of these meals that you know that work for you already saved into your um, food tracking app that you can reuse at a later date and then spend the, the second half of it building your own meals and then I will teach you how to do it. But having like your own personal library built out for you of meals that you know that you like, that you know that work for you is it's, I mean, it's a badass upgrade is the truth. So th that does remind me of a question I did want to ask that I get asked a lot sure. of the times too, because I personally eat five meals a day and then people are like, do I need to eat five meals a day? Can I eat three meals a day? And I think people get again of like trying to figure out, you know, how, how often should they be eating throughout the day? So I want to say that within, the, like, I recommend like four to six meals. I mean, like when you're really pushing food, some people will do seven, but like for me, I mean, like seven meals is an absurd amount of like yeah, thinking that, that sounds... would, that would mean I would like, I would eat the same three things and I just break it into seven. Like, that's how I would do it. 
Um, but for gals that have had weight loss surgery that have like, some, like lots of restriction that, you know, they, sometimes they have to eat more meals, um, for other gals that is just unreasonable to eat. I mean, I think five meals is typically the sweet spot, but I would say anywhere from like four to six is usually is like the most common that I see. Because it, it's, it's interesting because I had, um, a guest on the podcast not too long ago that was discussing intermittent fasting and how no. that she was very much not a fan of eating, you know, five, four, five, six meals a day of how you needed to eat less meals a day to fit into an intermittent fasting window. So it's so for <laughs> women, intermittent fasting is probably the worst approach because it takes a huge hit on our hormones to be fasting. Our bodies are meant to be fed. Our hormones are meant to be fed. Um, that is uh, especially for women that have, we're talking about PCOS, Hashimoto's, those kind of things. Intermittent fasting is 100% the worst thing that you can do to reach your goals. <laughs> I do have, I mean, it's, it's, it's not my opinion, it's science. Um, but I do have um, plenty of women that'll say to me, like, I'm just not hungry to eat five meals. And the truth of the matter is that if you, um, if you set, I always say when you first start, set alarms in your phone to remind you to eat um, and stick to those meal times. Soon as your metabolism fires up, as your hormones kick up, you will now have regulated, you'll start regulating your hunger cues, your hunger hormones. Um, and you like your body will start firing up because our bodies are really meant to be fed. Um, so I usually find like if you stick to those meal times, let's say five meals a day for a couple of weeks, all of a sudden your body becomes this alarm. And you're like, oh God, I was never hungry in the morning, which by the way, not being hungry in the morning is also related to having adrenal fatigue, cortisol dysregulation. There are like, there are all other things that like, we think it's just our preference, but really there are, are there health things going on here? Um, but feeding your body in the morning, all of a sudden you start to feel hungry in the morning. And you're like, wow, what is this? Well, um, you're probably having more regulation with your cortisol. Your adrenals are probably healing. Your metabolism is probably waking up in the morning. Like it's all, it's all related. And gosh, I just made it so much more complicated than it needs to be. <laughs> but there are so many aspects. There are so many aspects to it. And there are so many reasons why our bodies need to be fed. And even if it's not our preference, again, there is that aspect of if you want to learn something new, you have to get a little bit uncomfortable. And maybe five meals, maybe six meals is too many meals, but you know, four meals also spread out throughout the day is it works just fine. Yeah. And I think too, like um, especially if you're new to a strength training routine like once you're you're working out like you are definitely hungrier <laughs> at least I yes. am <laughs> and ladies like and please eat carbs after around your workout I mean people <laughs> like we need to replenish that glycogen that is depleted during your lift if you want to put on muscle which by the way is the only way to increase your metabolic rate um, is you have to be fueling up with carbs and replenishing that depleted glycogen uh, from your lift I also wanted to point out that you do have some free guides on your website too. We do. I, I, I since I switched off my fitness pal, I don't have a my fitness pal guide anymore. Although I won't trash my fitness pal though. If anybody wants to know the reason why I switched, I'm happy to share. Um, I so I don't have my fitness pal guide anymore. But if somebody wants it, I can send it to you as well. I'm happy to share it. Um, there is a macro guide on there as well, and I have tons of macro friendly recipes on my website. Um, you can also subscribe. I send out a motivation Monday email every Monday. Um, and we put in any kind of promos, new recipes and that kind of stuff. And I've been test kitchening some protein donuts that are going to be Ooh. bomb. I can't wait to share those. Oh, nice. Okay, sweet. Well, yeah. always, it's always so awesome chatting with you, you know, even though we, we chat every Friday, <laughs> but chatting you with you on, <laughs> on the podcast. And I, I hope that answered some, some macro questions and clear that stuff up. And then I hope if, if, you know, if anybody needs a coach or has some questions that they reach out to you and, uh, you can get everybody on, on the path to being their best self. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on again. I always love chatting with you. And quite frankly, it's been lovely to spend the whole afternoon with you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again. Thanks, Amanda. Have a good day. For info on health coaching and more, Go to amandavalentinebites.com.